Maryland sports fans, there's only one sports book in the great state of Maryland with over 50 years' experience booking bets and supporting customers. Bet Fred Sportsbook at Long Shots is now open and is the only sports book in Frederick offering cash betting on football, basketball, world soccer, and more. Visit the Bedfred Sportsbook at I-270 and MD-85 in Frederick, right next to Longshot's Off-Track Betting. Go to BedfredSports.com for more information and your chance to win exclusive merchandise. Must be 21 or older. Play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, what up? This is Cat Jackson from the Crow Wings, and you're listening to The Loud Spot with Sebastian. See you later. Uh, What's up, everybody? You. Welcome to the Lost Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosby. Right out of Oklahoma City, I got a fucking punk rock band for you guys tonight. The Crow Wings. Somewhere in one of those M states, right? One of those M states, like Minnesota or fucking somewhere like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're way up north in Minnesota. Um, uh, Bob Dylan Town, Prince Town, you know. Um, all that good shit. Husker Du Town. We get a lot of great talent up here in the fucking winterland. How long has the Crow Wings been around? <clears throat> well, fuck, I guess three years now. You know, when we first started, it started out as an acoustic duo with me and Jessica Horman, my old musical partner. Uh, we just started because there's nothing else going on. You know, I'd moved here uh, from Minneapolis, where I was born and raised. And spent most of my life, you know. Um, but I moved to <clears throat> Brainerd, Minnesota. I hooked up with Jessica, and we started playing these uh, acoustic songs. And then we started just getting a set list together. And next thing you know, we have a whole band. And, you know, it's kind of like this um, uh, Velvet Underground type of sound. is experimental and shit like that. It's very weird and eclectic rock punk rock sort of underground stuff. So we did that for about, God, almost, almost two years, man. And then, and then shit just sort of um, like imploded. People have lives. They quit and, you know, people went off and got married and (laughs) wanted to to do other things. And those married assholes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so, you know, all of a sudden, we're just sitting here. It's me and Rusty going, all right, it's just you and I now. Everyone's sort of jumped ship. What do we do? (laughs) You know, and so we had a choice. We either fucking pack it in or just keep going with the crow wings, you know. And so we thought, fuck it, let's keep going. And so, dude, it's really funny. At that point, we started working with a drum machine in our basement, just him and I, you know. No, actually, before that, we started just jamming. Yeah, you got you yeah. without 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 a drummer. You got to have a drum machine because it's the easiest way, obviously, to make at least have something to keep a beat to while you're playing, right? Yeah. We were just sitting around for the winter after everyone fucking quit on us, and <laughs> we still we still love them to death, and we're, we're you know all that stuff. But they they wanted to do other things, and so we did that for a while, <clears throat> and then dude, the Minneapolis riots happened, the, the whole George Floyd thing. Happened. Oh and shit! Yeah, and that's my neighborhood. That's where I, I grew up. Oh fuck! And so yeah, yeah we saw that. Stuff. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, like like firsthand saw, saw 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 all the riots. We were there on the second night when the fucking uh, third precinct burned down. I mean, we were just basically watching it. I had to go there because. That's where I was born and raised, and it's like my neighborhood was burning down. So. Curiosity, I think, on top of that, you know, would want to make you go. Like, even if you weren't from there, like, let's say I was there, I'd probably want to, like, drive by. Like, Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. And let me give you a quick description. 
it was a celebratory thing. You know, the way the media portrays it, they, you know, try to make it sound like it was just destruction. But really, it was like, oh, the fucking big, bad, fucking um, evil empire is dead. And, it, and everyone was celebrating. That was part of it. If you were there, you understood it. But, um, you know, there was also the injustice of everything that happened, you know, that sparked it. But once the people sort of took back the streets... You know, um, you know, the whole thing kind of struck me as like almost like an organized event because, you know, when we first showed up there, this lady out of nowhere comes comes rolling up to us with this huge cart with with these uh, uh, cases of water. She's like, would, would, you, would any of you guys like some water? Like it's the Are, fucking you know, fair, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but every, check this out. Everywhere you look, buildings are burning. Yeah. And fucking just total chaos. Fire hydrants were squirting water on buildings. I mean, and it was it was like nothing you had ever seen. But it inspired us that night to um, go home. When we went home, we were like different people after we lived through that. Uh-huh. And that's what that's what inspired me to say, "Fuck it, let's crank it up to ten because that's where my roots are." And we, that's where we started doing our punk rock shit. And, and we got a fucking pepper spray. Yeah, we got pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we got pepper spray, man. I pulled the fuck out of there. Like, <laughs> was your drummer there? Was your, was was the drummer there? No. no, no. We, we oh. at that point. Oh, okay, okay. So he's fairly new. That fucking sucks. I've never been pepper sprayed before. And I just can't imagine. Yeah, you know what's funny? is like, like, at this point in time, that the, there was no need for pepper spray in, in that area, like the the area we were in. I think we might have just caught a cloud coming down wind, but it was a killer cloud. Fuck <laughs> that! <laughs> thank yeah. God! Thank God! Did you remember his name? Is it Todd? Yes. A good thing Todd wasn't in the band. You should be happy that you weren't in the band yet, because you might have been pepper spray too, bro. Like fuck I- that. <laughs> no, I think Todd's got a little more common sense. <laughs> no, so we were there on our bikes, dude. Uh, we were there on our bicycles. And uh, through this whole chaos and everything and all this craziness, there's fucking Rusty Cage with the Crow Wings doing wheelies down yeah. the, 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 the street. You can do a wheelie for like two or three blocks. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so there I am, like, just doing wheelies all the way down the middle of this, this riots and riots and shit. It was, it, it was kind of cool. I mean, it made made for some good filming opportunities. And- yeah, I was gonna say, did you have like your GoPro or our phone out to to you know make a video of it at all? I mean, you might as well. It's gonna go fucking viral probably if you did. Yeah, <clears throat> but it was that life changing experience, Sebastian, that um, really turned the corner for this band, the Crow Wings, to do our current sound. Because at that point, we decided, fuck it, let's just be honest with ourselves. And, yep. and ask, what do we want to do, man? And that was, let's crank the fucking shit up to 10 and go back to our punk rock roots. You know I like what I mean? It. I like it, yeah. Super, super, once, super cool. Once we started doing that, then all of a sudden magic started to happen instantly. And everything started to spiral um, up. Well, let's go ahead and play your first song that we're going to play. This song must be a new song called Punk Rock Christmas. Yeah. Um, we right. did it for this Christmas, and uh, we hope you guys have an excellent Christmas this year. 2020 sucked. 2021 is <laughs> going to be a lot better. But, uh, hey, Merry Christmas, everyone. Enjoy the tune. And rock out. Rock out. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Crow Wings, and the song is called Punk Rock Christmas. Here we go. It's Christmas time. Come to town Are you ready to stay? Bring toys and boys and girls On Christmas Day It's Christmas time Let the bells ring true 
here's what people don't understand about me. Like, I love punk rock. Like, I am a punk rocker. Like, I love, I love metal. I play a lot of metal on the podcast. A lot of it. Play a lot of hard rock. I've been doing some hip hop lately, some rap music. I want to get into country music. I'll, I'll even do, I've done some, uh, like experimental dance type shit, you know? I even reached out to yeah. Ace of Bass. They never contacted me back, but, but, you know, <laughs> but I got no shame. I got no shame, right? So, but punk rock is like my favorite style of music, and you guys have that. Like I said before, the podcast started old school punk sound with the new, like a new, I don't know what the word is, like a, just a grasp on it. And I, I love it. I love it. And by the way, thank you guys so much. Uh, Kat, you told me that you took some time out of your day, out of your music video that you're doing right now for this song. Yeah. So what's up with that, man? Yeah, man. As a matter of fact, um, we're taking a break to hang out with you and uh, with your listeners. You know, um, we're shooting the video right now for uh, Punk Rock Christmas. And uh, it's going really great. Having a lot of fun, as usual. When we shoot videos, man, it gets kind of crazy, but we just, you know, have fun with it and and uh, do our thing, and people seem to dig it. Well, I, I, won't, I won't try to keep you too late, but I, have to, <laughs> I do have to ask you one question. Yeah. I want to ask Kat, do you still have your face mask next to you? Yeah, I do. Let me see all that bling real quick. Where's the bling bling? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that fucking awesome <laughs> face mask. This, this is what I wear when I walk around town, you know, and I freak oh, everybody dude. out. Dude, I bet everyone looks, I bet, I bet you're the most stylish dude walking around Minneapolis at any given time of day. Uh, yeah. The crow it's wings. Gotta be, it's gotta be done, yeah, you know. Don't no one forget the crow wings is is awesome. So you guys are doing, you guys are reaching out, I guess, uh, doing some stuff in Europe, maybe? Well, <clears throat> what we're doing are these uh, videos, this Christmas videos going out for Marsh TV, and they're out of Scotland. And, yeah, we have actually this um, fan base growing in Europe, and it's pretty cool, you know. Um, this whole COVID thing actually worked out for the best for us because it gave us a chance to get a lot of work done, record the whole second album, on our downtime and uh you know it looks like now things may be starting to open up pretty soon and we can go ahead and resume doing shows and going out on tour and saying hello to all the people and you know turning the fucking shit up to 10 and making the nuisance of ourselves around you know the country (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's what we've been up to man we're getting ready getting ready to hit the fucking road dude I, you know, I, I can I can relate to uh, what you just said about COVID and how as you guys took it as a positive. Let me tell you guys, and I'll make it quick because the show is about you guys and not about me. Even though it's my show, it's still about you. If that makes sense. Uh, COVID, for me, re- without this po- with, without COVID, I wouldn't be doing this podcast at all. Okay. Because I'm an entrepreneur. I had a lot of big business type, type stuff going on. Lost all my contracts. Because of COVID, and then I was like, I'm gonna sit on my house around, sit on my house, do nothing. My wife made me get a job because I was becoming a lazy little bitch, and I got a job. And then I was like, but I hate working for other people. I just like working for myself because I hate, I hate the stress of other people's stress that I got to take care of. I just want to do my own thing. So one way for me to release that, 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 that my inner entrepreneurship ism. Whatever that word would be, my entrepreneurshipism, <laughs> which is definitely probably not the word, uh, was this po- was this was this podcast? That's that's a word now. It's a word. That's right. We said it. We're gonna publish it. It's a fucking word now. Thank you. I appreciate you it. Know. So so yeah. So I, I can relate to how you know with you guys with your band, you were able to kind of buckle down, get closer together, and focus on what you guys want to do for the future because of COVID. And I was able to re- do some releasing of not being pent up by doing a podcast. So it kind of works. I think we kind of relate to that in the same way. Well, you know, that brings us to Todd, how we joined the band, you know, at that point, let me, if I can go back to my story about Rusty now, we're just sitting around. We had experienced the riots thing and we decided, fuck it. Let's be honest. Let's crank it up. 
and go back to our roots. And that's what we did. And we started playing with this drum machine and making these live stream videos on Facebook, you know, like twice a week, just running through our set. It was, you know, it was just something to do. And we started getting all these watchers. And one of the watchers was Todd, man. Todd was sitting around. Well, I'll let Todd tell the story. Go ahead, Todd. All right. I, I was just going through, uh, I, I like to watch music videos on Facebook, all, ki all kinds of different kinds of music. And I ran across these guys once. And I was like, that's cool, you know, and I went past it. And I ran into them again. And I, after the third time, I think it was the second or the third time, third time I decided they needed a drummer. And uh, <laughs> I contacted them. And I told them I didn't think they would be disappointed. And I don't think they were. I, <laughs> now, Todd, is your is your style of drumming, um, besides being in this band, are you normally a punk rock drummer? You kind of strike me as like a hard rock metal drummer, just by your appearance with your Nirvana shirt on, kind of like grungy, hard rock. Looking at Cat and what is it, Rusty <laughs> over there? Like you, you can you can tell those motherfuckers are punk rock. Like they look like you got a fucking mohawk over there, and Cat's looking all fucking. I don't know, like the way he looks. <laughs> but then you got Todd, who's like, he likes Nirvana, he probably likes the Metallica, probably this is Sublime, Rage Against the Machine. That's just what you, I'm just, that's what you look like. <laughs> well, I, I was brought up in a pretty diverse, I mean, my dad was in a doo-wop group when I was growing up and that's they sang cool. in the room all the time. And so my music taste is very diverse. As far as drumming goes, I do what the band asked me to do. Um, and this band is one that I felt was really, really good with what I felt like I wanted to do as a drummer. And, uh, that is why I came to them. That is one of the main things that drew me to them was that I thought they fit the style that I played best. I think your guys' music, the, it's, it's just a three piece, right? It's the three of you, correct? Yes. yes. I think that your music fucking rocks. I personally like it it's just something that i would want to listen to because i like punk rock you know and and I, I listen to a lot and that's a lot to say because i play a lot of bands on this podcast i play a lot of bands on this podcast and it was really hard for me to get into the punk rock scene like it was like all these metal heads sending me music metal metal death metal but the punk rock guys are a little bit more standoffish kind of like, eh, we don't know yet but, <laughs> like, I don't know, man, you're a little too loud for us, bro. But it's like punk rock, and we're supposed to be loud, right? Right, absolutely. You know, you know the thing that, that sets, everyone has their own interpretation of what punk means. But, you know, for me personally, it's just keeping it real, man. That's all. You just fucking keep it real. And, uh, you know, that's what we try to do, just be fucking real from the get-go. Yeah. You know, and that's all it is, you know. That's what we do. One of my uh, one of my favorite songs by you guys is Samurai Sun. Like the music okay. video is cool, and that's Rusty over there laying down on the street, right, with your mom. Yeah. And then that's and, what we found him. That's <laughs> what we found him. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that actually. But first, let's play Samurai Sun, and then let's talk about Rusty and what his past is about. How does that sound? Sounds All right, good. sounds great. Here we go. Samurai Sun with the Crow Wings. You gotta love them.
There you go with Samurai Sun, The Crow Wings. I do want to say, because we were talking while that song was playing a little bit, you guys were on a segment for five minutes or so where then they commented on your videos in a positive way. That's awesome. I've seen shows where literally the host of the show just critiques them and says what could be better. Like, who the fuck wants to be on that show? Like, fuck that, like... And then she charges. They charge them. Like, be fuck you. Like, if a band's willing to to be on your on your on your platform, be kind, respect them, and respect their artistry and what they're trying to do. So, well, there was this TV show called Morris TV um, out of Scotland, and they approached us and they wanted to show one of our videos, and they asked us to do like these little intros, you know, like you know, to their to their show to set up our video. And so we did these little skits. I was in the bathtub with just my boots on with my guitar and Rusty was just doing some fucking, you know, crazy eyeball shit, you know, um, it was just really wacky stuff, you know, and they, they loved it. And, uh, so yeah, we did that. And, with, but, and the teacher were pretty, were pretty good. I mean, they weren't like, I mean, obviously, obviously they're wanting you to do something cool. So I guess it would be good. Good commenting and not shitty ones. Well, they they, they seem to like our video. Good. Yeah, I mean they they uh, uh they they posted uh, didn't they post it twice uh, on two different episodes or, or was it just one? Uh, they uh, they put it on a couple different episodes, but Samurai Sun was a video where we just went around the city gorilla style with a fucking video <laughs> camera. Yeah, and just you know. Just like did a little trespassing and shit, and got some great footage, you know. Oh, the I, I do want to say this video. I want everyone who listens to my podcast go to the Crow Wings Facebook page, go to their videos. They have one that pops up as the most popular one, which is the next song we're going to play called Bluebird. But Samurai Sun. What's really cool about that is Rusty's there, and we're going to talk about Rusty's story real quick. He's there laying on the street. And kind of like gets up and and uh, <laughs> I, I I actually got that idea. Uh, uh, well, I was I was homeless in California for like nine years, and and that's where that's that homeless, was. not homely. <laughs> homeless, and and uh, I played guitar on the sidewalk for money for for like nine years, and that's actually where really where I learned how to play, and. Um, uh, that's kind of where I learned how to sing and stuff. But uh, where are you know, Cali- I- where in California? Did you were you homeless at? Well, uh, all up and down the coast. Uh, you know, I I started out in San Francisco and um, kind of made ba- home base in Oceanside, and then went from Oceanside to San Diego quite a few times. I did this. Because I was born in San Francisco and I was raised in the Bay Area, like oh, yeah. Yeah. cool man, that's going yeah. cool. I'm actually so I was born in San Francisco, raised in a town called Vacaville, uh, which is just like right near Vallejo. Okay, I love fucking San Francisco, man. Uh, I was actually born in uh, Medford, Oregon, actually. Okay, okay, so you're homeless, San Francisco. So how did how did Cat find you? Did you find him? He was probably not homeless anymore, mm-hmm. right? So, so Tell me about the, 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 the peak, the peak of my homelessness in California led to uh, you know a whole bunch of drugs and you know uh, you know sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah. Well, well, eventually that all got to a pinnacle and it got just a little too crazy for my head, so I had to run away. And you know, uh, I came here to Minnesota. And uh, I, I, I want to I want to ch- ch- chill out with the oh man. How do you, how, okay 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 okay. I love how cats like tell this story. Tell this story. The part that got you crazy. Okay, the part that got you crazy. All right, so I'm sitting with my buddy on on this park bench. We're looking at the ocean, right? And he asked me for a cigarette, so I hand him one. And uh, I look out in the ocean. I start thinking and. And I get, I get this nudge on my shoulder. He's like, hey, bro. I'm like, what? He's like, hey, man, are you, you, you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Why? He's like, dude, you, you've been drooling and staring at the ocean for like six hours. <laughs> I said, yeah, right. I just gave you a cigarette. He's like, no, that that was a long time ago. I looked down and I literally had like a, a, a sinking trail of drool on my, on my shirt. Holy shit. 
it was six hours later. I have no idea what happened to that six hours. <laughs> it's gone. It's definitely. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and at that point, you know, I just I realized that you know time is too precious of a commodity to 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 be wasting like that. So, um, you know, I I decided to come to come to Minnesota and, and quit quit those. Uh, so, yeah, so okay, and, okay. So, Cat met you out in California. You gave him a cigarette. Six no, I wasn't that guy. I wasn't. That oh, guy. okay, 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 okay. So, okay, so how did Let's you end up in Minnesota? After after I moved here, I'm just riding my bike down the street, and I seen this this motherfucker sitting outside of his house just playing guitar. Was that <laughs> it's been a while back, you know. He, he's playing his guitar. I'm like, oh, cool, you play guitar. I I, I, I stop my bike. I'm like, oh, you play guitar. You know, I I play guitar too. You know, I I just want to see who this guy was. So I pulled over, and you know, we talked talked a little bit, and uh, man, it was a uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, you, you, you tell them the rest. Uh, all right, let me tell you the real story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey, yeah. What, why don't why don't none of that happen? Why don't we? None of, none of that happen. <laughs> this is all, it's all lies. It's uh, all uh, lies. Let me, let me tell you the real fucking story. So anyway, I was sitting on the porch, on uh, my front porch, playing guitar, and this guy is riding his bike. He's riding his bike across, you know. Oh, uh, just in front of my house. He does a 360 on his bike. He comes up to my house. He's like, hey, you, you play guitar? You know, bear in mind, this dude looks fucking weird. He's like, <laughs> he's like a fucking, you know, he's, he's just like, like a character. Do I, do I look funny to you? <laughs> so, I mean, so I said, it's a matter so of I say, opinion. I, so I said, yeah, man, I, I play guitar. Do you play guitar? He's like, yeah, I can play it. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, right. And so I handed him this fucking guitar, not expecting shit, right? I was just going to be like, what the fuck is this dude? Anyway, he starts whipping out these intricate solos in all this mesmerizing guitaring. And I'm like, okay, uh, that's natural talent. What's your name? What's up, man? <laughs> so at that point, I took him seriously because this dude was like playing all these intricate scales and i was like oh okay you know what the fuck you're doing and that's how we met you know just right on the on the fucking street that's fucking that's a pretty cool story that is a really cool story i want to get more into todd's story and his his background in general uh but first i do want to play bluebird so why don't we play bluebird this is your number one song on i think on your facebook page right yeah, 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 this fucking shit is like blowing up, and I don't, I don't know. It's really weird to um, have shit just like blow up like it is, but you know, I'm not complaining, man. It's you know, it's 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 never it's never the song the band wants to get blown up. It's always I would assume it would have been Samurai Sun, but it's like it's like the fans will take over, and the next thing you know, it's like, I, dude, I've even had bands that have a song that they don't even like. And they're like, fuck it, the fans love this song, we hate it, but we're gonna now now it's our favorite too, because the fans keep on wanting it. And but but Bluebird, I'm not saying Bluebird sucks, I fucking love this song too. This is one of those another one of those punk rock songs. I, all, all your songs are fucking fantastic, and I said it before, and I'll say it I said it to you guys off the podcast, and I'll say it now. Samurai Sun is one of my top ten punk rock songs of all time. So Thank you. And that's that's fucking for yeah. the that's for the fucking record, for the record. Thank you. All right, all right. All right, here we go right now with Bluebird. No. 
All right, there you go. It's Bluebird, their number one on Facebook music video. It is a cool music video, by the way. How many... Okay, you guys have done shows before, right? You guys have played concerts? Yeah, yeah, many concerts. Okay, so... How many, like, have you guys played on, like, a huge stage? Is it local? Is it is it nationwide? Have you gone on any world tours, played overseas at all? Uh, our last one was actually uh, in, in Minneapolis. Um, it, it was at the, the terminal, and um, it was a really, really great turnout. Um, our, our video, actually, uh, that we had live streaming, Got, got interrupted because of uh, a, a little bit of nudity. It was not planned. <laughs> right. It was not planned, but it was also not sanctioned. We had the same night, dude. Our last show, you know, before the whole fucking COVID shutdown bullshit. Um, we, we, yeah, we, we had a handful of shows cooking, um, and shit started to get out of control fun, like yeah. it should. And then, kaboom, we got shut down. But um, the, you know, the house was rocking, though. Yeah, I mean, we, we bring down the fucking house, dude. We kill it. We, yeah. We bring the Marshall Stacks old school. Yeah. It's, I, it's fast, fast and loud. You know what I got to you know ask you? I got to, you know, here's what I, I didn't ask you. I don't really care about what Bluebird means so much, but I'm very curious. And I think people that listen to my podcast are going to be curious about the name Samurai Sun. Like, how the fuck? That's so fucking cool, man. Like, how did you come up with that name? I just, I don't listen to the lyrics as much and think deep about them. Well, you know, that that song was directly influenced by that night that I was talking about earlier when we uh, experienced the George Floyd riots. And it was a matter of survival. And if you listen to those fucking lyrics, it's uh, all about just fucking survival. And just being a fucking ninja or, a, you know, a samurai or being someone stealthy because it was really surviving that night was pretty intense and that's exactly where that came from that fucking night at the riots and that's what that's about yeah dude, I, yeah i kind of thought it, it did i did say before we uh played that last song i do want to talk about todd a little bit um and i want to i want to ask todd i want to ask todd a little bit about his background uh i mean i know you grew up there's a doo-wop stuff like that and you got into this band. No escort, you know? Let, 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 let's hear when you guys connected and how you guys, I know you guys met through the, the Facebook stuff, but what's like, what's like your background in general? In music? J- yeah, just, it just about I yourself. I know, I love making. <laughs> I, um, I, I've been playing for a long time. I play a little bit of guitar too. I played in a lot of bands. I played in a couple 50s bands. I made a lot of money doing that. Um, I played in a couple of hard rock cover bands over the years. Um, I, I, call, recently, I called that shit. I called that shit, by the way. I called it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Absolutely. Todd used to play for the, um, the, the surfing birds, the Trashmen. The Trashmen. Okay. Did, okay. Now I don't know who that is. I don't think were they were, kind of, were you guys kind of big. The Trashmen were, uh, a band in the sixties that were from Minneapolis and they sang a song called surfing bird. They recorded it and uh, it became quite popular and you know I played with them guys, quite a few times. What cat? You know, in family guy, that, that, that the song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, well, you were in that band. I wasn't, I played, um, a few, I played quite a few times with them when the drummer wasn't well enough to play and he was well enough to sing, but he wasn't well enough to drum. Okay. And so they called on me to um to to drum while he sang while he sang the songs. It was really cool. It was really fun. That is that's a that's a cool story. And I know I I love how you reference Family Guy when you meant like I know this song without Family Guy, but the fact yeah like, you know Family Guy about a who ma ba ba da da da. I'm like yeah I fucking know it. You could have just you could have just hummed that thing and I would have yeah I would not know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but there again, there's another Minnesota band for you. Do what? There is another Minnesota band, the Trashmen. They okay. Were in the sixties, yeah. So Todd, you're you're born and raised in Minnesota. Yes, all my life. So you claim that what do they call it? M Town? Is that like a thing? Like what do you call it? like if you're like claiming repping 
Uh, Minneapolis. What do, what do you guys say? M-Town? South Mini. What is it? South Mini, baby. <laughs> South Mini. South Mini? Yeah. So, Minneapolis. So, she said, South Side. I'm from the South Mini. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is, that, is that like 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 sign language? Sign language for M would be like this. It's like you got self mini. Like don't. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I fucking love it. I fucking love it. We already we've already gone a little longer than we wanted to before we play the next song. I want to go ahead and play Mio Mayo, which I accidentally pronounced as Mio Mio earlier. You can under you can understand why I messed that up. <laughs> Yeah, Mio Mayo, that's about uh, just hanging out with your fucking friends you haven't seen in a while, man. I do. Do you guys have cool names for your songs? You know, I should ask you this. I hate asking bands this question, but I feel like there may be a mini behind the crow wings unless you just saw a crow and you're like, oh, he has wings and you're super stoned and we're like, oh, the crow wings. Yeah, bro. Like, what's, what's the, is there like a deeper meaning behind it or is it just the fucking name? Okay, Crow so the meaning Coney. is, um, in, in Brainerd, where the band was formed, there's a little town outside of Minneapolis where I, I live, and it's called Brainerd, and the county is called Crow Wing County, okay? Cool. And, and I thought, wow, that's a cool name, and I did a search on it, and there's no rock bands or punk rock bands or any kind of bands with the name The Crow Wings, so I thought, fuck it, that's cool, let's do it. That is very cool, I love that, man. That is, uh, there was a band in California called Red Top Road, and there was an exit called Red Top Road, and so I knew where they got that name from, you know? I think naming things off streets and things like that are kind of cool, and they're unique, you know, for the most part. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and play Mio Mayo, and then we're going to play Burn Baby Burn, which that name is also cool. I fucking hate you guys. You have all the cool names. All the cool (laughs) names. You guys, I mean, Sam Rasson. And Bluebird's okay, I guess, but besides, you guys got some cool fucking names, dude. So kudos to you, kudos to you for that. All right, here we go with Mio Mayo, the Crow Wings. Check him out. It's been a minute or two since I was hanging with you. I'm coming over again. East and West, I like best to see if you, my friend. So let's spend some time feeling fine, and we do what we do. It's been too long, so I wrote this song for you.
You know, I, 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 first of all, I love Mio Mayo, but I'll tell you why I hate you guys right now. Because, a bada boom ba ba bada boom da da ba. You guys got that shit stuck in my head? I can't get it out of my head. Fuck, man. The Trashman, the trashman <laughs> yes. That, that, that is just, uh, I mean, obviously that's a fantastic song. Todd, did, when, did you have to play that song live with them and like, did it stay stuck in your head for days? Uh, yeah, I've known that song, gosh, since I was a little kid. And yes, I did have to play it live a few times. But that song was pretty famous um, for in my house. My dad listened to it all the time. I, I pretty much knew it when they brought it to me. So That's super cool that you're able to do that, man. And you know what? I think for the next like three days, not only am I going to be thinking about that song, but I'm going to be thinking about your band. And anyone that listens to this podcast is also going to be thinking about that song and your band. So great self promotion. <laughs> great self promotion. Uh, sure. For sure. I feel like Cat I feel like Cat has a lot to say all the time. You can tell by looking at him and his demeanor. He's very eclectic. He's very like looking around the room and he's very artistic. And so it's the yeah, eyes motherfucker. Is that, is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> no, I, I I think that you're probably, you know, I think you if there was one person in the band who's kinda like the member, like the one that's kind of like the directional piece, it's probably, it's yeah, it's probably Cat. Well, you know what? This band actually um, is kind of uh, based on our friendship, man. And that's that's what it is. We're just hanging out, being fucking buds and rocking out. And people seem to dig it. And uh, now now that Todd's, um, hey, I, I want to say one thing. Yeah. The minute that, that, that Todd stepped into, um, our rehearsal space and start playing with us. Let me tell you something. Um, from the first note, it took off like a fucking, uh, like a machine and it sounded incredible. Now, when you're a musician, like you're a musician. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> all of our lives, we dream about having fucking some kind of fucking uh, musical connection. Like you hear about, read about like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Well, we were lucky enough, dude, that something really magical happened to us when the three of us got together. The synergy between the three of us was like, boom, you know, like independently. Like the first song we ever played together sounded incredible. Like, it's a, and it was a song that none of, none of us had ever, the three of us had never even practiced before. It's super important to be in a band with people that you, that you have the, that you feel each other's energy and that you synergize yeah. with, because if, they, if, you, if you if you don't, then you're trying. But if you do, then it's not trying. It's having fun and making good music. Yeah, dude, that's right. That's the spooky thing. We're not trying. There's something happening here. When we play together, there's a there's a fucking energy that explodes in the room, and we all look at each other, and it's like riding a fucking wave. And yeah. it's a fucking. It is like crazy, and it's like um, and people hear that. And if you're in the room, you fucking feel that. You know, we shake the house when we rehearse. You know, we rehearse really loud. Yeah. And it's fucking, we, it's like a, a fucking wave, man. And, it, and it's that's the one thing. Important. That's the one thing I miss about being in a band is that feeling. Like I've had that feeling before, especially on stage. And you just know that you guys sound awesome. Like you're like, yeah, we rock. You know, because you you feel the energy. And you know, I miss that. But what's cool about having a podcast? Is for 45 minutes to an hour, I get to be in a band, whatever band I'm interviewing, for that amount of time. And for that amount of time, I always feel like there's a synergy or energy there with me that connects just for that little moment, but I get to do it often. And I, it's almost like being on stage, but not being on stage, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain, man. I love podcasting because I feel like, I feel it. You know, I feel it and I love the bands that I'm talking to. And I'm, well, gen I'm genuinely curious, you know? And it's like, that's why you're fucking good. And that's why, you know, your fucking numbers are exploding the way ours are, you know? And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's why. Because you love what you do. Yeah. That's, that's goddamn right. That's why. Let's play Burned, Baby Burn, And then we're going to close out the podcast because it's already been like 50 minutes. So I want to go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I point one thing out um, on this latest album, our second album? Rusty Cage sings two tracks. Um, Gotta Get Out of This Town is one of them. And the other one is this 
called Burn Baby Burn. Yeah! This one features Mr. Rusty Cage. All right, let's do it right now. Burn, Betty Burn, the Crow Wings. And there you go, burn, baby, burn. And we got Cat Jackson with this Christmas hat what on. Up? What up? <laughs> does that how make you feel good? <laughs> it does. It puts me in the uh, in the Christmas spirit. Uh, you know, oh, Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, I, I think your goatee makes you feel Christmassy with the red goatee and the red uh, sweater you got on there. Hey, do you know I have natural fangs? That? No, they're not natural. Yeah. They are not natural. Are those natural? Yeah. No, they're not. They're carved in. No. <laughs> they're, they're, mine. they're mine. Are they really? Oh, Cat, is he telling the truth? He is telling the truth. Oh, shit. Okay. Yes. I see, I believe Cat for some reason. I can tell he's not a I can tell like, he's serious hey. <laughs> when he says something. Just, just these nice ones? Those aren't mine. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so here's what here's what I want to ask you guys. If fans are interested in listening to your music, you guys are working on a website right now, but you do have your Facebook page, you have YouTube, you're on Apple, you're on Spotify, right? Are you guys selling yep. any merchandise yet anywhere or is that to come? We I do believe we have some some t shirts right now. Um uh, Todd, you want to share more on that, or? Yep, we have some. Uh, we have some large and extra large T-shirts. I have probably about maybe a dozen of them left. How come no, they, they, no mediums? No mediums? 
No. I'm a medium. Them all. They, all, they're all, they all went really fast. I, everyone's a medium, you know? Like a lot of most, like most people. <laughs> they got the mediums. So is it just T-shirts? Uh, so far, yeah. We just have That's the T-shirts. So and they will be available from the website. Um, and I don't know. Sometime in the next couple of weeks, that'll be done. And and then we'll have stuff for sale. Um, but they can buy music anywhere uh, on the normal platforms that music is sold today. Um, we're, you know, we're on um, YouTube, but go to our Facebook, like us, and, um, you know, join the party. And, uh, yeah, that's what, where you can find us right now. We, we're, we're, we like YouTube, and, and, and we really like Facebook because uh, – uh, it's, it just gives us a really uh, common platform for, for people to interact and comment on our videos and, uh, but, you know, let, let us know, you know, you know, what, what they think and, 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 and you know, uh, also, also I, we post videos themselves, you know, like, you know, we can, we can interact through videos. Absolutely. So when is your next, so when, when do you guys have a full album coming out in 2021 or what's that looking like? Yeah, uh, the album is recorded. All the tracks are in the can, and uh, you played a couple of them tonight. So thank you so much, Sebastian. Awesome. Um, I would say in the next three to four weeks, the album will be uh, manufactured and ready to ship to stores and put on the website for sale. That we're is... working on the we're working on the cover art right now as we speak, and so it's all coming together. And I give yeah. it about three weeks, then we take it to the uh, the printers. Awesome, dude. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know. Shoot me a message, Cat, or any, anyone in the band. I, I know I'm friends with Cat on Facebook. I guess maybe Todd and Rusty, too. Not not sure on that, but I, I message Cat a lot. Uh, yeah. So I, I want to thank you guys for being on the show. You guys are in the battle of the bands. Whether you knew it or not, you guys are, as you did know. And you guys are in the battle of the bands, and there's part of 35 bands, and... We are going to air those the 23rd, 24th, Christmas Eve, and 25th, Christmas Day. Uh, so may the best band win. You guys have been, I love your music. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evening while you're shooting a music a music video for your Christmas song. I really, really appreciate that. And I, I just love your guys' music. I want to thank all the fans, everyone who listens and subscribes to The Loud Spot. Uh, please listen to Battle, Battle of the Bands. Share our podcast. Promote what we're doing. I fucking love it, and I fucking love you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Good night, everybody. We're out. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Does everything that's good really have to end? A pin post, half a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over.